Okay, hello. It's Pizza Fi Friday time again and I'm very excited because now I uh, will be chatting to lovely Mike Huxley. He um, has managed to unlock his screen and he's now able to join me live and we will be talking about money. How you can make money as a travel blogger, a blogger in general and how you should be charging if a brand, a company wants to work with you. So listen up, he has a few very interesting points and uh, opinions on, on this topic. And um, now Mike is uh, here, yes, come on. <laughs> I know, now it's posh. Anyways, um, I will pull out my questions and I know a few of you had a few questions uh, beforehand and I try to cover them all with Mike. Today, if you have any comments or questions please let us know and um we will be happy to talk about them hello mike yeah hi I'm very glad hi. It... <laughs> stop the text oh, maybe... travel blogger who can't work facebook yes oh gosh but don't worry now we've got you it looks good connection is stable let's go <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I was introducing the topic as, um, yes, I think it, it's a hot topic uh, and an evergreen topic because I think um, uh, this is something our whole industry should be become aware of and, uh, and should be um, also probably, I think what I want to say is that we should be talking about this topic more often because there's still even though everyone loves to talk about money, but there's still such a lack of consciousness about it in, in, our, in our scene. And I said that you have a pretty good, uh, pretty interesting um, thoughts and takes on it. So let me start with one a little bit provocative question in the beginning. Um, would you say that or would you recommend never working for, for free at all? Um, yeah. No one should ever work for free. It's a fundamental concept of, of, of business and society that if you do work, you get paid for it. It's that simple. It's, that's the reason that every other job out there has a minimum wage. That's the reason why employers just can't get away with not paying their employees, you know? Why are we any different just because we're in a creative industry, just because we're our own... Um, businesses and brands were not you know everyone should be paid it's that simple and why do you think it is such a common thing still to do for so many travel bloggers or bloggers in general to take on unpaid work well I, th I think there's that's quite a nuanced sort of answer to that I think blogging in general was still dealing with a legacy of what blogging used to be it used to be a hobby and um, people did it as uh, maybe a part-time gig as, as something to do just for a bit of fun um, and you know that they, they were happy to work for free so to speak mm -hmm. and I think we're also dealing with the legacy of um, traditional media as well where um, because we're such a new uh, a new media we're trying to force ourselves into those paradigms into those ways of working and ways of thinking and prs are still coming to us thinking oh you're just a hobby blog you can do all that marketing for free can't you but they'll pay tens mm -hmm. of thousands to the traditional media for doing the exact same thing and we're dealing with all these different things that are all feeding into um the, the climate that we've got now where um bloggers are in, in some ways, afraid to talk about money. They're scared of talking about it and because they're, they're afraid of missing out or they're afraid of um, brands not working with them for whatever reason. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll give you two examples from two separate brands uh, that I've spoken to recently in two um, very big but different um, travel conferences. One brand uh, said outright to me, that why should they pay any blogger when there are a hundred bloggers lining up to work for free behind you? And mm -hmm. I couldn't disagree with him. That's true. From a business point of view, he's absolutely right. Why would he pay? 
when he doesn't have to. It's it's that simple. And another yeah. blogger, um, oh sorry, another brand said in a in a different conference that if bloggers aren't willing to set their rates, if bloggers aren't willing to say no, these are my rates and you will pay me, then brands are going to be the ones who set those rates for you, and they're not going to set rates that actually pay you and, and benefit you. So they're yeah. going to they're going to set rates that benefit them, which is basically free nothing they're going to get try and get you to the work for free so and but and both of those attitudes are absolutely right and that's what bloggers are dealing with at the moment and that's what we really have to change because we need to change from that old paradigm of traditional media um mm. into a completely new paradigm because we are new media we are the owners of our own platforms and yeah I think that we have to be the ones who say, no, we establish what rates we get paid. We establish the paradigms in which PRs and brands work with us. Because mm -hmm. if we let someone else do it, it's not going to be to our benefit. Sure, yeah. I totally agree with, with you on that. But uh, from a perspective, from um, out of the perspective of a new blogger, like someone who just started not like you you're an established blogger you know what to, you can charge because you have the traffic on your site but how should someone who just started out go about this i get asked this a lot and i've got a stock response ready for you if you <laughs> went and got a job in mcdonald's now would you work for free for the mm -hmm. first three years because you're brand new at the job no, no. you get paid <laughs> straight from the off it's as simple as that and new bloggers yeah. It doesn't matter whether you're new, whether you've only just started, you've got no, uh, only a few um, people reading your blog. It's a brand new platform. It doesn't matter. You are still worth something. It's that simple. You might not be worth as much as someone who's been, say, doing it for six years, has a massive audience and a huge platform that um, can charge a lot more. But you are worth something. It's that simple. No one is worth nothing. And That's I think bad. that we need to get out of this mindset of just because you're new, you're not worth anything. Just because you're new, you can't yeah. charge. You can. You can't charge as much as someone who's been doing it a long time. You can't charge as much as someone who's a lot bigger than you. But you can charge yeah. something. And your value there is when you're working with brands, you can say, look, Okay, I'm not going to reach as many people as, as X blogger over there, but I'm a lot cheaper. You know, you can get a lot mm -hmm. more deliverables from me and I'll grow in time. Mm -hmm. So that partnership can grow in time. And if you pay for those deliverables now, you'll get a great bargain because in a year's time, two years time, five years time, those posts mm -hmm. are still going to be up on my site. Those videos are still going to be up on YouTube. They'll be getting... SEO boosts, they'll still be there, they're evergreen. So work with me because I'm new, I'm cheaper, and we can grow that partnership in time and you'll save money. <laughs> okay, so this all comes down to, uh, in an ideal world, I would say, to a minimum wage for travel bloggers. <laughs> oh no? So that we all can say someone who just started out should at least uh, earn this much money how much would you say if you want to say a number can you say well, one <laughs> i think it's really difficult because there's so many variables i mean is is that a, a minimum rate for a sponsored post or an ad on your site or a video there's so many different things we do we can't get an exact number for anything but what we can do i think is get um a good set of guidelines um mm -hmm. the first one should be never work for free it's, it's it's that simple but after that you say okay if i'm not working for free what do i charge and personally i think that um those crappy rates that we always get offered from prs you know the, the 50 dollars, the 75 dollars, the yeah. really insulting rates to probably 95 percent of us that is what a brand new blogger should be looking at at a base minimum so take all those okay offers and say okay that's the base minimum and my worth is, is worth more than that depending on 
uh, my audience, how uh, big my site is, mm -hmm. the work involved and everything else. So personally, I think those those basic rates should be the minimum, but obviously that's going to be slightly different for, for everyone. Okay. I have another question for you. Actually, it's from Sandra, who's also watching today. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Sandra. <laughs> she, had it the, <laughs> she asked the other day if you, um, as an exception, would agree with uh, working um, for free if it brings you back at least a little bit of value in um, like in, in, in form of backlinks and if you can establish yourself as as an expert and uh, hello <laughs> and um, if it then on the long run like she said uh, it turned into paid work but it was like a stepping stone for her um, would you then it, in very Pretty general terms, no. Um, but that there are sort of, it's it, again, it's a nuanced answer to that. But in very general terms, no, because we've all been there. Um, I, I think me and Sandra started around about the same time um, in blogging, give or take. Uh, so we've all been doing it roughly the same amount of time. So we've all been at the point where we've made those mistakes. We've worked for free. You know, we, we've done that because that's what we thought had to be done it doesn't yeah. at all because at the end of the day you've got to look at what has it actually got you and i'd argue personally that all those times we worked for free um it hasn't actually gotten us anywhere it hasn't actually gotten us anything the only um mm. people that it's benefited are the brands and the, the prs that that we've done it for because you've got to remember as well if if just say, for example, a PR asks us to work for free. They're getting paid for that. They have a budget for that. They just don't want to give it to us. They want to keep it all for themselves. So yeah. they're, benefiting, they're benefiting from our work. The brand who puts all that budget out to the PRs, they're benefiting from the free marketing. Mm -hmm. We don't get any benefit from that. Even if there's a link um, involved there, even if there's exposure. I mean, how many memes do we have to have that say we can't live off exposure before people finally get it drilled into their heads. You know, we can't do that. We can't work for free. Um, how, how about traveling for free? Is that, is that not uh, good enough? That's the, that's the same thing. I think um, because it doesn't matter whether it's um, a product, whether it's travel for a press trip, whatever. The value of that can absolutely be um, incorporated into the price you charge um, mm -hmm. because you know it, from a DMO's point of view it costs I think on average about five grand per person per journalist or blogger or whoever that they take out on a press trip and um, so obviously they've got a lot of money um, that they put into that but and, and, then, and they do expect a return on investment for that but yeah. what is our work worth you know we're, we're not out there on a holiday. We're not out there on a free jolly. It, we have to do work on top of that. And they are getting a lot of value from us, so much more value than they ever got from traditional media and traditional journalists, even the ones from the so-called yeah. big name um, brands, you know, that because they're getting mm -hmm. social media, they're getting video, they're getting... And now this was Mike. How did I lose you? Sandra, are you still, are you, can you still see me? Or is it me who's now out of the video? Oh, this is a bummer. Mike, where are you? Sorry, this is so bumpy today. <laughs> um, okay, you can see me, this is great. I hope Mike is, able to be back on again Mike split yes he said enough you heard it all don't work for free never take unpaid work <laughs> not even for exposure <laughs> oh Facebook unblocked him that's also a good suge suggestion <laughs> he's just too um, a revolutionary <laughs> Mike come on come back in you have more to say <laughs> let me see if I can Okay, it says you are 
actually on broadcast with me, but I can't see you and hear you. It's interesting. Well, I'll fill in a little anecdote. The other day I got uh, one of those emails. I'm sure you all have had those emails or I, I get them on a regular basis. Hello, we came across your blog and blah, blah. We want to work with you. And are you open for any guest posts? So I'm always suspicious because, well, obviously it, it looks like a very email. They send it out to a hundred of other bloggers too. And, um, and then um, they ask if, the, if I'm open for guest posts. So this is already like, mm. <laughs> so my answer is always, well, if you are a blogger trying, trying to um, work on, <laughs> on your uh, exposure and, and on your uh, link juice to, back to your website, then uh, yes, be my guest. Um, you, can, you can pitch me, like <laughs> uh, suggest any topic that you think that fits to my website as you're so interested in my particular website, you should be coming up with a topic. And uh, if you're uh, a company or you would like to add um, links to one of your clients' uh, website, then here are my rates. And uh, usually I uh, lose them <laughs> because they were looking for free um, backlinks. And um, this guy uh, the other day, he would just go on and say, oh, you know, I have I have many uh, clients I work with and I um, you you take this offer because um, this makes a lot of content for your site. Sorry, oh, I have you went no to... idea what happened there. Um, <laughs> we had yeah, but... uh, an idea that Facebook just split, <laughs> said no, you are saying Yeah, I'm too, too controversial for Facebook, they don't like me. Yes. But um, no, as, as I was saying though, you, you've got to value your work because if you don't value your work, no one else will. And you'll still get that same exposure. You'll still get that same benefit that they're promising you if it's, mm. um, if it's paid work as well. So you could say, look, okay, um, you want me to do this work for you. Those are my, th that's my fee. You can pay me that. Mm. And I might give you a little discount if you give me this benefit as well. But the, mm -hmm. The point is you get paid for the work you do. And yeah. that goes from right from the beginning, right up to six years, 10 years, 20 years down the line. You know, it yeah. doesn't matter what work you do or what benefit they're promising you, charge mm -hmm. for your work. Yeah, um, I, I totally agree. And uh, I was just uh, telling a, a little anecdote while you were gone. And I was wondering how you respond to um, people who ask you, oh, hi, I came across your blog. Uh, can I, uh, are you interested in, in, in receiving guest, guest posts? And I usually always say that here are my rates uh, or ask them, hey, are you a genuine blogger who wants to ch simply work on, on uh, getting do, backlinks back? Do you mean someone who wants to put a guest post on my site or? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I don't accept guest posts at all. Um, okay. that's, that's just a, a personal decision on, on my site. But I get, I do get a lot of those uh, requests. And mm -hmm. I say, exactly like you've just said, the vast majority of them now, I think, probably aren't genuine bloggers. They're probably PRs looking for a free link and trying to scam us, basically. Um, yes. So a lot of the time, I'll just say, there's my rate sheet for... Uh, a sponsored link um mm -hmm. but for the genuine um bloggers who who i do know who've chatted to me maybe on social media and um they're looking mm -hmm. to uh, get get some posts out on different sites i'll say I'm, you know i'm sorry personally i don't accept guest posts on my site um but put it up on yours you know use your work to boost your site and let me know when it's up and i'll uh, share it on social media for you because oh, that's good. it's you know it, it, it you know it's it's not good or bad whether bloggers do accept guest posts or not some do some don't and it's it's fine it's a personal decision um but i think you've got to weigh up the value of um what value you're getting from that link and 
mm. that work that you're giving them. Um, I mean, I, I've, yeah. I've done um, guest posts for, for other people in the past, but I've done that as a personal favour for people I've considered friends. Um, you know, and, and that's... In, in some ways, that's um, boosted my authority a little bit. Um, because, for example, when I when I write um, something on travel health, something which I've got qualifications in, something which I've got mm-hmm. a high degree of authority on, on my own site, um, I have to weigh up whether um, that link I'm getting back or that audience I'm reaching there is um, mm-hmm. more or less beneficial than using that on my own site and having people just come directly to my site through things like SEO. So you do have to balance that up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's another business decision that you have to make. Uh, it, it's one strategy that people decide on, but um, if yeah. you, yeah. And, and also uh, as well, that... going into that whole link building thing, obviously there's a lot of spammy practices. There's a lot of bad, unprofessional mm-hmm. practices within that. And I think a lot of the time, the, the genuine side of it, where you are genuinely trying to build um, a mm-hmm. few links and, and, and build your presence it a lot of the time it's it's gone over into that bad on professional side so sometimes it's just easier to say uh, as a blanket policy no thanks I don't want anything to do with it yeah yeah okay um I'd like to tap one last time into that um topic where I mean you said defining the rates is really hard and I get it. I mean, it, it, it depends really on the numbers, also on, on the brand that you're um, communicating with. And, uh, but as a general suggestion, um, again, um, if I'm the person, if I'm as a blogger reaches out to a brand, that's a whole different scenario, right? Um, as yeah. opposed um, to the, the company comes to me saying ah, we want to work with you so if I um, like to work with that brand because of the, we share the same values and I support their cause or whatever um, how would you say and I, I mean what would be best to to, to include um, l- let's assume that your numbers are still very low you have I don't know a, f- a couple hundred Instagram followers to say <laughs> And uh, your traffic is below five thousand a month. Um, so how how do you set rates basically? How yes, how do you get um, started? I mean, <laughs> well, the, the, it's it's the same for a brand new blogger as it is for someone who's been doing it for years. Um, mm-hmm. There are there are certain things that you can go through to to set your rates, and and I think um, first of all, like I said, the, the principle should be you are getting paid. I mean, there are mm-hmm. um, some sometimes where you, where you can sort of there are where you can sort of waive those fees. Uh, for example, I'm um, I've worked with various charities in the past, like um, Care for the Wild International, Bauer in Bali, um, uh, and those are charities that I personally um, like working with because I believe in what they're saying. So I've waived my fees for those mm-hmm. uh, people okay. and, and that, that, that's very very different to working for free so I, I just want to get that um that difference sort of set up first and foremost because if your mm. baseline is charging for your work you've got the freedom then to say okay you're a charity um that i really want to work with or you're a brand that is going to lead me into a long-term partnership so you can charge for x y and z but you can waive mm. this specific fee because you're getting that instead and it's the same for press trips as well if you're young um you're a brand new blogger and you get invited onto all these press trips you might not be big enough to charge a lot for your day rate but if you charge something you can say and if they don't have a budget for that then you say okay i'll waive my fee my daily rate uh, fee for you now if you buy X amount of photos or X amount of video uh, off me. So it's still worth you going out. Mm -hmm. You can waive your daily rate because you're getting paid for this package instead. And that is, you know, that's something that 
everyone, uh, no matter whether you're a new blogger or an old blogger, can do. And mm -hmm. if you start from that um, that platform of being paid, then you've got the freedom to do that and get paid in different ways elsewhere, working from the back end. But if you start from a platform of working for free, you've got nothing. You've got nowhere to go. And you will always yeah. work for free because that's the that's the standard you have set for yourself. Yeah. No one is going to pay yeah. you unless you value yourself. So in terms of how much you charge, um, the first thing I'd say is look at traditional media as well and look at the rates that they charge for the exact same work. Because we are... Mm -hmm our own platforms now, we are new media. So we should be able to stand alongside old media and say, look, we're comparable now. There is a lot of studies, a lot of evidence that's saying we are as big as, if not bigger than the traditional media. We have bigger audiences, more engagement. Yeah. So we should be charging at least as much. And the only thing that's holding us back on that is what the market will bear, which I'll get to in a minute. But if you look at, traditional media and say, just say, for example, a sponsored post, which is probably something that the vast majority of us do. Most travel bloggers or bloggers in general, for, for example, will do a, a sponsored post and charge maybe, what, 100, 200, 300 pound for it. Mm -hmm. If you look at traditional media, for an advertorial, advertorial or an editorial in uh, a big magazine, or even a, a a small uh, magazine with a smaller circulation, they're charging eight, nine, ten grand for that exact same work. You know, there's a huge difference there. And we're getting more engagement. We're getting bigger audiences now. We're getting right to the top of the search engine rankings. They're not. Yeah. So why is that huge disconnect in what we charge? So you can look at that as a baseline and say, okay, if they're charging that much, maybe I should be thinking I should be charging more. So then you look at your peers as well. Look at other bloggers and what they charge. And this is something that really annoys me about bloggers because the vast majority of them are so clicky and so secretive about what they charge. And they shouldn't be. It's, I nearly swore then, but it's absolute <laughs> crap. It really is. Stop seeing, being so secretive with what you charge. It shouldn't be a... Dirty word, you know, money is not a bad thing. Charging for your work is not a bad thing. I put all of my rates up on my site for everyone to see. So if anyone wants to look uh, at my rate sheet, it's up there for everyone to see. Go and look at it and base your rates on that. It's fine. I don't mind. But mm -hmm. every blogger should be doing that. And every blogger, if every blogger did that, we'd all have a better idea of, what everyone is charging as a baseline. So yeah. look at other bloggers, get get to know them, you know, on a, on a personal level, and then ask people, what do you charge for this? What do you charge for that? And at the moment, because no one is sharing anything, knowing people on a personal level um, is one one of the only ways you can you can get to see um, what people are charging. But if just say for example, you're charging a hundred pound for a sponsored post and then you find out mm -hmm. that a dozen other people with the exact same numbers as you were charging 200 300 400 you know that's when you can start putting your rates up but on top sure. of that once you've got that baseline there are so many things that you need to consider as well just like any other business uh, would when they're charging uh, when they're deciding their prices for their product you need to charge uh, you need to look at your overhead costs, you know, how much it costs for you to get your laptop, get your camera equipment, get those uh, video editing uh, programs, go on all these trips. It costs mm -hmm. money. So you need to put those overhead costs into account. You need to put how much profit you want to make into account as well, because you are a business after all. You do want to make money off this. Otherwise, what's the point? Um, you have to look at your competitors' pricing or your or your peers pricing like i've just said um and you have to look at the time it takes you to do the work that you're, you're doing for any given brand and the skill that it mm -hmm. takes to actually do that writing is a skill photography is a skill videography is a skill and that is a skill that should be paid for it's it's a mm -hmm. skill that should be paid a lot of money for and if i hired um 
uh, a photographer, for example. The photographer for my wedding charged a fortune, you know, and, and rightly so, because that's a highly skilled job. And I was happy yeah. to pay that. So we should be doing the, the exact same thing. And on top of that, you have to look at your platform. The online, anything that you put on that platform is online real estate that is worth money, whether that's uh, link juice, whether that's a page which is the equivalent to an advertorial or, or an editorial in a traditional magazine. Um, you know, all of that is worth money. And then how much deliverables you're, you're given to a brand as well, how, how many deliverables, I should say, you're given to a brand. Um, you know, because if they're, because uh, I've had um, some PRs, for example, uh, contact me about a, a, pre a press trip, and I turn probably 95% of press trips down now. Um, and they're, they're contacting me saying, oh, there's no budget, but we want you to do three sponsored posts, X amount of social media every day, Instagram stories, uh, all this video. Mm -hmm. No, that's a hell of a lot of work, and you're going to pay me for it if you want that. Uh, you know, so you, you, and you can charge people for access to your audience as well. And your brand's reputation, and I've seen a lot of bloggers who um, are basically shills, for lack of a better word, and that they'll market and promote anything. That's your brand's reputation on the line. So everything, every partner that you have, every product that you promote, every uh, trip that you go, and that's your brand's reputation. Your audience mm -hmm. cares about that reputation, and so should you. So if you're... Um, if you're wanting to work with all these different brands, weigh up carefully um, what that means for your brand's reputation. And obviously, the bigger you get and the, the, the more audience you get, your prices can go up on that as well. So there's a whole load of, um, of factors that you can put in when, when you're considering your pricing. Mm -hmm. But I think that the biggest one at the moment that's holding us all back is what the market will bear because like i said before i, I mean i charge a fair amount for for my deliverables um i know that they are worth so much more but i can't charge that because i know there are thousands upon thousands of bloggers working for free stop working for free damn it people you are dragging us all down it's ah so annoying but you know, and, and, and when, when you're thinking about what you're charging as well, think about what deliverables you're, you're giving um, to, to your audience and to the brands that are working with you. Because, and, and this is, again, it's going to be different for, for most bloggers because we all do slightly different things. But, you know, a lot of us do similar, uh, give similar deliverables. So, um I like to think of it like a like a pyramid. So right at the bottom, you've got the the basic stuff that we all do. Um, you know mm -hmm. things like um, ads, affiliates, um, media vine, things like that. And that, that's like the, the basic level stuff. And don't get me wrong, there, there's nothing wrong with them. There are there, they are good um, income streams, but they are only one income stream each. You know that mm -hmm. it's not the be all and end all. And this is what I, I keep trying to tell new bloggers as well you he, he comes to me all the time saying you know how do i monetize my blog how do i uh, make money off it and they think that slapping a load of affiliates on there um is, is gonna do it and that's gonna make them money it's not you know it's it's hard work and it, there's nothing wrong with them if you if that's what you want to do as part of your business plan that's fine but mm -hmm. they are only the beginning they are only one thing yeah. that you can do so that's the bottom tier the middle tier mm -hmm. Uh, the deliverables that we all give, you know, that could be everything from, um, you know, sponsored posts to advertising to sponsored videos, um, anything like that. So all, all the bread and butter of, of what we do as bloggers, basically. Um, and again, if you put all of those income streams in on top of what you're doing with affiliate links and advertisements and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you've got a solid base of deliverables that you can make money off on a variety of different income streams and right at the top of the pyramid this is where i think blogs um really can come into their own and really can earn a lot of money and it's where personally i i make the lion's share of, of my income is where you make your blog as a platform for a unique business and you know this can be 
a wide variety of things. Again, a lot of bloggers like like myself have merchandising, you know, come and buy this on my blog. Mm. It's really cheap and it's <laughs> lovely. Um, okay. So have merchandising for, for your blog. That's part of your brand and you can make a lot of money off that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of bloggers do things like, um, you know, that they, they they take people out on, on guided tours, their readers out on guided tours and make money that way. Mm -hmm. um, one of my um, biggest uh, money makers is my online travel clinic, uh, you know, where people can come to me as a qualified nurse and get travel health advice before they go off on the gap years or backpacking trips. Yeah, That's a unique business that uses my, my blog as a business platform and my brand mm -hmm. as a platform. And that, you know, those things can make you a lot of money. And when you combine all of these different income streams, multiple income streams, it all adds up to a lot of money. And that's how you make your blog into a business. That's how you make money. And all of these things are worth a lot of money. It's up to you to charge for them. Yeah. Well, Mike, as a as a closing thought, because I know you got to go, um, um, do you think we all or the industry needs some sort of protection like a, a label an official um professional credibility or how do you say that i i'm, I'm looking for words now yes and no. some, um, but, I, I, know, I, I see what is... you mean um, yes, yes. I mean, it's something like what the ptba should have been before they cocked it all up um yeah exactly i, I think in, in some terms, you, you can't have, uh, because bloggers are so different, you can't have um, a set of absolutely explicit rules saying you have to charge X amount for this, X amount for that. But what you can do is have guidelines. And you can say, mm. as, as an absolute rule, no blogger should work for free. That's a standard. But at the same time, um, the price that you pay will be dependent on a whole load of different factors. Mm. And the price that you pay um, will also determine the professionalism that you get and the reach that you will mm. get and the audience that you will get from that. So to get a good audience size, to get to reach a good audience and to get a lot of promotion, to work with highly skilled professionals, you should expect to pay more. And in return from that, you should expect a good professional return on investment. And that's what professional blogs yeah. will give you. And I think from my perspective, um, coming from a nursing background, um, we have as our guiding body, the NMC, which is the Nursing and Midwifery mm -hmm. Council. And if anyone hears the NMC, they know that anyone who's uh, under the NMC, and we have to be to, to practice um, as, as a nurse, we have to be. Yeah. Uh, but they know that we're going to be professional. They know what, that we've got a certain standard of education. They know that we've got um, certain standards of practice that we uphold. And they know what they're getting, basically. When someone hears yeah. that I'm a nurse, they know roughly what to expect from that because exactly, of yeah. the NMC. That's... And we can have something like that um, where they can say, look, they, they, we can put certain guidelines into place, things like, don't work for free. Give that return on investment for, mm -hmm. for the pay that you get. Um, but that, I would stop that short in, in saying that um, we can have absolutely explicit guidelines saying um, if you're a brand new blogger, you can only charge this. Or if you're a blogger of, um, say, 500,000 readers or more, you have to charge this. Um, because... You know, bloggers are different, and there are going to be slightly different nuances on that. Uh, again, for mm. example, if I'm writing a, if I'm working with a, a company that is involved in travel health, and I'm writing uh, something for them or putting their brand on my site, I'm going to charge a hell of a lot more for that than the average blogger because I've got professional qualifications yeah. that are worth a lot more. I've got weight and authority in that field, so I'm going to yeah. charge a lot more than what I charge for an average. Um, mm -hmm. sponsored posts for example so there are yeah. so many variables involved in that we can't say right you're brand new you've only been doing it for six months you have to charge x amount we can't do that 
Yeah. But we can have those basic guidelines in place that help people as well, because they know then that there are standards um, that should be met of, uh, for professionalism within the field. Mm -hmm. They know that they can charge uh, for the work that they do, and the work that they do is worth something. So I think setting something like that up is really important, and I think it's been tried before. It's just failed miserably up until now. <laughs> Okay, Mike. Yeah, I, I hope um, many people will watch this mo uh, this movie. <laughs> it's like a movie. <laughs> this video because I think this is a very important message that you're um, trying to get out out there. And um, yes, thank you so much for sharing your experience and your advice. Uh, it was very interesting, and uh, I know we could fill another hour uh, talking I could about talk it. about it's, this uh, all day. <laughs> <laughs> no problem i'm happy to uh, be here thanks for having But, me yeah thank you and thanks for watching and um happy friday everyone and see you next time <laughs> bye mike <Yeah>. and bye sandra <laughs>